Sunnah, sunnah, also sunnah, Sant Arabic, sunnah, plural sin sunan, sunan, is the body of traditional, social, and legal custom and practice of the Islamic community, based on the verbally transmitted record of the teachings, deeds and sayings, silent permissions or disapprovals of the Islamic prophet Muhammad, as well as various reports about Muhammad's companions. The Quran the Holy Book of Islam and the Sunnah make up the two primary sources of Islamic theology and law. The Sunnah is also defined as a path, a way, a manner of life. All the traditions and practices of the Islamic prophet that have become models to be followed by Muslims. In the pre Islamic period, the word sunnah was used with the meaning, manner of acting, whether good or bad. During the early Islamic period, the term came to refer to any good precedent set by people of the past, including the Islamic prophet Muhammad. Under the influence of al Shafi'i, who argued for priority of Muhammad's example as recorded in Hadith over precedents set by other authorities, the term al Sunnah eventually came to be viewed as synonymous with the Sunnah of Muhammad. The Sunnah of Muhammad includes his specific words, Sunnah Kaliya, habits, practices, Sunnah Filiya, and silent approvals. Sunnah According to Muslim belief, Muhammad was the best exemplar for Muslims, and his practices are to be adhered to in fulfilling the divine injunctions, carrying out religious rites, and molding holding life in accord with the will of God. Instituting these practices was, as the Quran states, a part of Muhammad's responsibility as a messenger of God. Recording the Sunnah was an Arabian tradition and, once people converted to Islam, they brought this custom to their religion. The word, Sunnah, is also used to refer to religious duties that are optional, such as Sunnah Salat. Etymology <inaudible> <inaudible> Sunnah, sant sunnah plural sin sunan, sunan, is an Arabic word that means habit or usual practice. Sunni Muslims are also referred to as all as Sunnah wal Jama'a, people of the tradition and the community of Muhammad, or all as Sunnah for short. Some early Sunni Muslim scholars, such as Abu Hanifa, Al Humaydi, Ibn Abi Asim, Abu Dawud, and Abu Nasr Al Marwazi, reportedly used the term the Sunnah narrowly to refer to Sunni doctrine as opposed to the creeds of Shia and other non-Sunni sects. History, definitions, alternative views According to scholars such as Joseph Schacht and Ignac Goldziher the pre-Islamic definition of Sunnah was simply, "...precedent", or "...way of life". It was first used with the meaning of "...law." in the Syro-Roman law book before it became widely used in Islamic jurisprudence. First century of Islam Early schools of Islamic jurisprudence also had a more flexible definition of sunnah than was used later, that being, "...acceptable norms", or "...custom", and was not limited to traditions traced back to the Prophet Muhammad himself sunnah al it included examples of the Prophet's companions, the rulings of the caliphs, and practices that had gained general acceptance among the jurists of that school. Evidence of the use of other sunnahs at this time is found in the Hadith comment made about a report on the difference in the number of lashes used to punish alcohol consumption Muhammad and Abu Bakr ordered 40 lashes, Umar 80. All this is sunnah, and also on Umar's deathbed instructions on where Muslims should seek guidance. From the Quran, the early Muslims who emigrated to Medina with Muhammad, the Medina residents who welcomed and supported the Mahahiran, the Ansar, the people of the desert, and the protected communities of Jews and Christians. Al -al it was Abu Abdullah Muhammad ibn Idris al Shafi, known as al Shafi'i, who argued against this practice, emphasizing the final authority of a hadith of Muhammad, so that even the Quran was, to be interpreted in the light of traditions, i.e., hadith, and not vice versa. While the Sunnah has often been called, second to the Quran, it has also been said to, rule over and interpret the Quran. Al Shafi'i forcefully argued that the sunnah stands on equal footing with the Quran according to scholar Daniel Brown for as al shafii put it the command of the prophet is the command of God his success was such that later writers hardly ever thought of sunnah as comprising anything but that of the prophet topic <laughs> <laughs> alternative views living sunnah 
In the 1960s, Fazlur Rahman Malik, an Islamic modernist and former head of Pakistan's Central Institute for Islamic Research, advanced another idea for how the prophetic Sunnah should be understood, as the normative example of the Prophet, but not filled with absolutely specific content. Rather, it should be a general umbrella concept that could and should evolve as a living and ongoing process. He argued that Muhammad had come as a moral reformer and not a pan legit, and that the community of his followers would agree on the specifics of the Sunnah. If Western and Muslim scholars found that the Isnad chain of transmitters and content of a hadith had been tampered by someone trying to prove the Muhammad had made a specific statement, this did not mean they were fraudulent. Hadith verbally speaking does not go back to the Prophet, its spirit certainly does. If hadith changed from the early schools to the time of al Shafi'i, and then through tampering from al Shafi'i to the collections of a hadith of al Bukhari and al Muslims, they actually formed a kind of IJMA consensus or agreement of the Muslim scholars. According to Rahman, they were materially identical to IJMA. Non hadith Sunnah basic features of the Sunnah such as worship rituals like salat ritual prayer zakat ritual tithing hajj pilgrimage to mecca psalm dawn to dusk fasting during ramadan are known to muslim from being passed down backquote from the many to the many backquote according to scholars of fiqh such as al shafi'i rather than from consultation with books of hadith more often used to consult for answers to details not agreed upon or not frequently practiced According to Javed Ahmad Ghamidi, another modernist, this passing down by continuous practice of the Muslim community which indicates consensus was similar to how the Quran has been «received by the Ummah» Muslim community through the consensus of the Prophet's companions and through their perpetual recitation. Consequently, Ghamidi sees this continuous practice sunnah as the true sunnah—equally authentic to the Quran, but shedding orthodox sunnah and avoiding problematic basis of the hadith. Inner states according to the view of some Sufi Muslims who incorporate both the outer and inner reality of Muhammad, the deeper and true sunnah are the noble characteristics and inner state of Muhammad. To them Muhammad's attitude, his piety, the quality of his character constitute the truer and deeper aspect of what it means by sunnah in Islam, rather than the external aspects alone. They argue that the external customs of Muhammad loses its meaning without the inner attitude and also many hadiths are simply custom of the Arabs, not something that is unique to Muhammad, and kulukan azim or exalted character in the Quran, real sunnah cannot be upheld. Other uses of the word sunnah salat In addition to being the way of Islam or the traditional social and legal custom and practice of the Islamic community, sunnah is often used as a synonym for mustahab encouraged rather than wajib, fard obligatory regarding some commendable action usually the saying of a prayer. Mustahab, sunnah deeds are those that earn a reward in the afterlife for those who do them, but will not bring any punishment for those who neglect them. According to Islam Q&A website of Muhammad Salah al-Munajid this second definition of sunnah is used by scholars of usul and fiqh for acts that are mustahab encouraged in the five categories of sharia rulings known as the five decisions or five akram salat as sunnah arabic slat al or optional prayers performed in addition to the five daily compulsory salat prayers some are done at the same time as the compulsory prayers, some are done only at certain times, e.g. late at night, and some are only done for specific occasions such as during a drought. They are called sunnah because how they are practiced is based on stories, narrations, interpretations, traditions of Muhammad by his companions. Examples include al sun and al rawadab sunnah prayers which Muhammad did regularly, salat al dua and so on. Sunnah muakkada are actions Muhammad never omitted to do, whether he was traveling or not, such as the prayers sunnah al farj and al witr. Use in the Quran they word sunnah appears several times in the Quran, but there is no specific mention of sunnah al rasul sunnah of the messenger or sunnah al nabi or sunnah al nabawiya sunnah of the prophet, i.e. the way practice of Prophet Muhammad. There are several verses calling on Muslims to obey Muhammad. See below. Four verses 8.38, 15.13, use the expression sunnah al awalan, which is thought to mean the way or practice of the ancients. It is described as something that has passed away or prevented unbelievers from accepting God. Sunnat Allah, the way of God, appears eight times in five verses. In addition, verse 17.77 talks of both the way of other earlier Muslim messengers, Ibrahim, Musa, etc., and of our way, i.e., God's way. 
This is the way of those whom we sent as messengers before you, and you will not find any change in our way This indicates to some scholars such as Javed Ahmad Ghamidi that Sunnah predates both the Quran and Muhammad, and is actually the tradition of the Prophets of God, specifically the tradition of Abraham. Christians, Jews and the Arab descendants of Ishmael, the Arabized Arabs or Ishmaelites, when Muhammad reinstituted this practice as an integral part of Islam. Topic basis of importance The Quran contains numerous commands to follow the Prophet. Among the Quranic verses quoted as demonstrating the importance of hadith, sunnah to Muslims are Say, Obey Allah and Obey the Messenger which appears in several verses, 332, 5–92, 24–54, 64–12 Your companion Muhammad has not strayed, nor has he erred, nor does he speak from his own inclination or desire. A similar favor have ye already received in that we have sent among you a messenger of your own, rehearsing to you our signs, and sanctifying you, and instructing you in scripture and wisdom, and in new knowledge. Ye have indeed in the Messenger of Allah a beautiful pattern of conduct for any one whose hope is in Allah and the final day, and who engages much in the praise of Allah." The teachings of wisdom have been declared to be a function of Muhammad along with the teachings of the scripture. Several Quranic verses mention wisdom hikmah coupled with scripture or the book, i.e. the Quran, and it is thought that in this context, wisdom means the Sunnah, Surah 4 and Nisa, Ayah 113 states, "...for Allah hath sent down to thee the book and wisdom and taught thee what thou knewest not before, and great is the grace of Allah unto thee." Surah 2 Al-Baqarah, Ayah 231 but remember Allah's grace upon you and that which he hath revealed unto you of the scripture and of wisdom, whereby he doth exhort you." Surah 33 Al-Azab, Ayah 34 and bear in mind which is recited in your houses of the revelations of God and of wisdom." Therefore, along with the Quran the Sunnah was revealed. Modern Sunni scholars have examined both the Sirah and the Hadith in order to justify modifications to jurisprudence For Muslims the imitation of Muhammad helps one to know and be loved by God. Providing examples According to John Burton, paraphrasing al Shafi'i, it must be remembered that the Quran texts are couched in very general terms, which it is the function of the Sunnah to expand and elucidate, to make God's meaning absolutely clear. There are a number of verses in the Quran where, to understand the context, as well as the meaning, Muslims need to refer to the record of the life and example of the Prophet. It is thought that verses 1644 and 64 indicate that Muhammad's mission, is not merely that of a delivery man who simply delivers the revelation from Allah to us, rather, he has been entrusted with the most important task of explaining and illustrating the Quran. And we have also sent down unto you, O Muhammad, the reminder and the advice the Quran, that you may explain clearly to men what is sent down to them, and that they may give thought. And we have not sent down the book the Quran to you, O Muhammad, except that you may explain clearly unto them those things in which they differ, and as a guidance and a mercy for a folk who believe. Quran 16–64 For example, while the Quran presents the general principles of praying, fasting, paying zakat, or making pilgrimage, they are presented, "...without the illustration found in hadith, for these acts of worship remain as abstract imperatives in the Quran." Types of sunnah There are three types of sunnah Sunnah Kaliya, the sayings of Muhammad, generally synonymous with hadith, since the sayings of Muhammad are noted down by the companions and called hadith. Sunnah Filiya, the actions of Muhammad, including both religious and worldly actions. Sunnah Takririya, the approvals of the Islamic prophet regarding the actions of the companions which occurred in two different ways. When Muhammad kept silent for an action and did not oppose it. When the Islamic prophet showed his pleasure and smiled for a companion's action, in the terminology of fiqh Islamic jurisprudence, sunnah denotes whatever though not obligatory, is, "...firmly established as called for in Islam. 
on the basis of a legal proof Dalil i circumflex, Abd Allah ibn Amr was one of the first companions to write down the hadith, after receiving permission from Prophet Muhammad to do so. Abu Huraira memorized the hadith. According to scholar Khalid Abu l Fadl, unlike the Quran, the Sunnah was not recorded and written during the Prophet's lifetime, but was systematically collected and documented beginning at least two centuries after the death of Muhammad, i.e., the 9th century of the Christian era. He states, the late documentation of the Sunnah meant that many of the reports attributed to the Prophet are apocryphal or at least are of dubious historical authenticity. In fact, one of the most complex disciplines in Islamic jurisprudence is one which attempts to differentiate between authentic and inauthentic traditions. Topic: <laughs> Sciences of Sunnah. According to scholar Jabril Fouad Haddad, the sciences of the Sunnah ulama Sunnah refer to the biography of the Prophet as Sira, the chronicle of his battles al -Maghazi, his everyday sayings and acts or ways, Sunan, his personal and moral qualities Ash and the host of the ancillary hadith sciences such as the circumstances of occurrence Asbab al knowledge of the abrogating and abrogated hadith, difficult words Garib al -hadith, narrator criticism al -dil, narrator biographies al -rijal, etc., as discussed in great detail in the authoritative books of al-Khatib al-Baghdadi. Sunnah and hadith Originally Muslim lawyers, "...felt no obligation," to provide documentation of hadith when arguing their case. Over the course of the second century under the influence of Imam al-Shafi'i the founder of the Shafi'i school of jurisprudence, this changed so that now there is "...rather broad agreement that hadith must be the basis for authentication of any sunnah," and the "...particular textual source for sunnah is hadith," according to M.O. Farooq, the Saudi Arabian Islam question and answer supervised by Muhammad al states that while the two terms are sometimes used synonymously the words, actions or approval that are narrated about the Islamic prophet Muhammad, the name of the group al -al -hadith which can also be called al -as -sunnah", books such as Qutb al-Hadith which can also be called Qutb as sunnah they also can have different meanings sunnah refers in a general sense to the affairs, i.e. The path, the methodology and the way of the Islamic prophet Muhammad, and to "...adhering to Islam in the manner prescribed, without adding to it or introducing innovations into the religion." Which hadith does not fukaha scholars use the word sunnah when explaining the ruling on doing a specific action as being mustahab liked or encouraged, which they do not with hadith. In the context of biographical records of Muhammad, sunnah often stands synonymous with hadith since most of the personality traits of Muhammad are known from descriptions of him, his sayings, and his actions after becoming a prophet at the age of 40. Sunnah, which consists not only of sayings, but of what Muhammad believed, implied, or tacitly approved, was recorded by his companions in Hadith. Allegiance to the tribal Sunnah had been partially replaced by submission to a new universal authority and the sense of brotherhood among Muslims. Early Sunni scholars often considered Sunnah equivalent to the biography of Muhammad. As the hadith came to be better documented and the scholars who validated them gained prestige, the sunnah came often to be known mostly through the hadith, especially as variant or fictional biographies of Muhammad spread. Classical Islam often equates the sunnah with the hadith. Scholars who studied the narrations according to their context MATN as well as their transmission isnad in order to discriminate between them were influential in the development of early Muslim philosophy. In the context of Sharia, Malik ibn Anas and the Hanafi scholars are assumed to have differentiated between the two, for example Malik is said to have rejected some traditions that reached him because, according to him, they were against the "...established practice of the people of Medina". <laughs> <laughs> Sunnah in Shia Islam Shia Islam does not use the Qutb al-Siddha six major hadith collections followed by Sunni Islam, therefore the Sunnah of Shia Islam and the Sunnah of Sunni Islam refer to different collections of religious canonical literature. The primary collections of Sunnah of Shia Islam were written by three authors known as the Three Muhammads, and they are Kitab al-Kafi by Muhammad ibn Yaqub al-Kulaini al-Razi 
Man la yadaruhu al faqih by Ibn Babaway and Tadib al Akam, and al Istibsir both by Sheikh Tusi. Unlike Akbari Twelver Shiites, Usuli Twelver Shiite scholars do not believe that everything in the four major books of the Sunnah of Shia Islam is authentic. In Shia hadith, one often finds sermons attributed to Ali in the four books or in the Nahj al Balaga. See also Bidda Categories of hadith References Notes Citations Further reading Difference between Hadith and Sunnah Burton, John The Sources of Islamic Law, Islamic Theories of Abrogation Edinburgh University Press. ISBN 0-7486-0108-2. Retrieved 21 July 2018. Hamza, Faraz. Sunnah. In Muhammad in History, Thought, and Culture, an Encyclopedia of the Prophet of God two vols, edited by C. Fitzpatrick and A. Walker, Santa Barbara, ABC Clio, 2014, Vol. 2, pp. 610–619. Musa, Aisha Y. Hadith as Scripture, Discussions on the Authority of Prophetic Traditions in Islam. New York, Palgrave. ISBN 0230605354. Topic: External links. The Sunnah as Primordiality by Sheikh Abdul Hakim Murad. The meaning of Sunnah in the Quran, Quranic studies. Sunnah and Hadith Center for Muslim Jewish Engagement. Legislative Authority of Sunnah.